Hello and welcome to our Stories of Transformation event this morning with Wayne Rowe. I am so glad that you guys are all here today on behalf of Team Outreach. It is our joy to welcome you to this call. Again, my name is Charlotte and I'm the Senior Director of Marketing here at Outreach. This year, we are celebrating 45 years of outreach, and I can't think of a better way to do so than to gather and hear the stories of transformation that your support has made possible. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce our guest presenter today, the incredibly talented Wayne Rowe. Wayne first began work with Outreach in 2009, serving as Outreach's humanitarian photographer for 16 years. He's traveled to all of our locations and captured the images that elicit the hope, joy, and triumph that your support makes possible. As super fans and super donors of Outreach, you've seen Wayne's work proudly displayed in our office, across our social media platforms, and on the covers of all of our publications. I'm thrilled that he is joining us today from England to share about moments he has captured through his lens while working with our teams on the ground and to share his insider perspective into the tangible difference that your contributions make possible. And with that, Wayne, take it away. Thank you, Charlotte. And I'd just like to say good morning to everybody. Um, I really do appreciate you taking the time um, out of your day just to come and be a part of this event, to come and listen um, to some of the experiences and some of the stories uh, that I have to, to share with you. Um, it's really nice for me to be able to talk about um, the thing that I actually photograph, because I get asked quite a lot to talk to students of photography, um, and I get to speak about the technical aspects of being a professional photographer. Um, so it's really nice for me to be able to talk about that that I actually photograph and because that is hugely important to me. Um, and I'm going to share some um, fairly personal experiences um, because of the impact that Outreach International has had on my life. Um, so, so I appreciate this time. I'm going to apologize um, for my accent. I'm British um, and I'm conscious that there may be some words or phrases that I use uh, that don't translate perfectly over there in the US. So I apologize in advance for that. Um, but uh, please bear with me. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, so I have a few photos that I'll be using and sharing with you as I uh, talk about my experiences and some of my stories. So please bear with me just for a few seconds. Right. Perfect. We're seeing your screen. Okay. That's, that's great. Okay. So, so Charlotte asked um, a few weeks ago, would I be willing to share some stories with you? Um, and to be honest, that is actually quite a difficult process, not because I haven't got many stories to share, but the total opposite. You know, I, I've been to every single location that Outreach International um, is working in some several times and each time I go there there are a, a plethora of stories um, that I come back with I could quite easily just spend an hour or two just talking about one particular trip that I've been on there is just so much that I could share so the difficulty was what do I actually share with you um, and so I ended up choosing stories that probably had the most impact on me personally um, and, and as I was thinking of those stories, I realized that there was this thread of transformation woven between each one. And, and this is why I said to, to Charlotte, you know, maybe we, we call this stories of transformation, um, different types of transformation. Transformation is for me as a photographer and as an individual, transformation of communities, uh, physical transformation, practical transformation that happens in those places. And I want to share some of that with you. But to start with, we're going to go over to the Philippines. Um, this is a beautiful country. Uh, and I've probably been to the Philippines more times than any of the other places that uh, OI is working um, in. But I want to tell you a few um, experiences from my very first time in the Philippines. This is the very first time I actually worked for Outreach International um, and photographed on their behalf. It was a 
donor site visit. And I understand that there may be some of you um, out there that also went on that site visit with me. So I'm hoping this um, may just bring up a few uh, memories, hopefully happy memories of that time that we shared together. Before I, I go into to these stories, I probably should explain a little bit about my background. Um, so prior to 2009, when I went to the Philippines, my background was in the corporate world. Uh, I was quite a senior exec within a, a large corporation here in the UK, but I decided that I needed to spend a year out. Um, I needed to spend some time with my family, and, and I also wanted to enjoy one of the passions of my life, which was photography. Prior to that, um, I wasn't considered a professional photographer. It was just something I did for my own personal enjoyment. Um, and so I decided I was gonna take this year out and, and, and try to, to enjoy that. My whole plan was to, after that year, to go back into the corporate world and pretty much pick up where I left off. Um, and so I got a phone call and no, oh, it was probably about October um, no, of 2009. Uh, it was from Andrew Betts, who was working for Outreach International at that time. And he said, how do you feel about going out to the Philippines? We have a, a donor site visit and we'd be grateful if you could take some photos of some of the work that we do there. And so I agreed wholeheartedly. I said, yeah, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, I love photography. This is something really, really different. You don't get the opportunity to do this very often. So yes, I jumped at the chance. So uh, I talk about transformation. And the very first thing that transformed me with this particular trip was kind of what, what I thought that a humanitarian, humanitarian photographer would actually take, the sorts of photographs. Now, the photo that you see on the screen is a typical photo um, of people in poverty that I grew up with. I would see these sorts of images on the TV. Um, usually here in the UK, it would be from Africa. Um, there would be flies buzzing around, kids' heads, and you can just see the huge despair um, and the level of poverty that they are suffering. And this is what I grew up with. So I just naturally assumed these are the type of photographs. But when I go to the Philippines, that I would be taking. Um, but as I got to the Philippines, I actually found that I was taking more and more photos like this. Um, I expected to see the poverty and I saw it. And don't get me wrong, it is heartbreaking. Those of you that was on that side visit with me, I'm sure you would concur with me that it is, it is absolutely heartbreaking to see some of the ways that people are having to live. But as I was walking around the communities, I just saw so many people that also seemed happy. They seemed joyous. Um, I saw children running around playing. And I thought, you know, these people are not that much different to me and to the place I live. Yes, their circumstances are hugely different, but children still play. They still find ways of being joyful. Um, and so I found myself just taking photos of this type of thing. And just a little bit further on, uh, when I visited one community there in the Philippines, I, I met this, this gentleman, his name was Ricardo. I remember his name because uh, my, my first name is also Richard, and so there was a link there. Um, but I met him and his family, and he invited me into his home. Uh, I, I should also say at this point that um, even though... I am there to take photographs on behalf of Outreach International. I make it a priority as much as possible to actually go and talk to the individuals before I even get my camera out and start taking photos. I think, how would I feel if a stranger came into my home or came into my community and just started taking photographs of me? How would I feel about that? I don't think I would feel comfortable so I, I think that the least I can do is just some, spend some time talking to these individuals, to talk to their, these families, listen to them, listen to their stories, listen to some of their pains, some of their difficulties, but also some of their joys as well. Um, and sometimes I can spend a long time 
listening before I take a photo. And if I'm really honest, they're probably the best times. Um, but what it does do from a photography perspective is that these people open up um, because they have spent just a little bit of time with me, talking to me, um, that I get to photograph when I do eventually photograph them a little bit deeper uh, into who they are. Uh, and as I say, they often will open up and share more of themselves. So it's, it's a, an important uh, aspect of my uh, professional photography doing this work. But as I was talking to Ricardo and his family, um, I said to them, look, you know, I'm here to take photographs, but I'd be interested to know what would you, how would you want me to present you to other people? Um, I've listened to some of the difficulties that you have. And, and he had recently just shared how um, his farm had been pretty much washed away by some floods just a few months ago. So I knew the difficulties he was ex experiencing. Uh, but it also talked about some of the successes with his goat project that he'd been involved in. So I said, how would you like me to present you? And, and, and he said to me, I remember this day, he said, well, as a family, we have hopes, um, we have dreams, and yes, our life is difficult, but we also have some achievements. Um, so if there's any way that you can show that through your photos, that had a quite a profound impact on me. And from that moment onwards, um, I strived and continue to strive to show hope in my photos, uh, pride, and that sense of success and achievement. Um, as, as, a side, as a side story, I had a meeting with a very large UK charitable organization, probably the largest in the UK, working in areas of, of poverty. And I, I'd sent some of my photos, many from, uh, from our life. And um, they said, yeah, we're interested in using you as a photographer for us. But as I met them down in London, they looked through my work and said, these are great. But unfortunately, we feel as though they're actually too hopeful. They're too positive. Um, we prefer to use uh, the images that show the extreme poverty that these people um, are facing. I came away from that meeting, well, actually, at the very end, I said to them, it looks as though we're not a, a good match, because to me, this is what's important. Um, and so I ended up uh, giving away quite a lot of work. Um, but simply from that time that I spent in the Philippines and with Ricardo, that transformed my thinking of what a humanitarian, humanitarian photographer should be photographing and how to present those photos to the wider public. The second form of transformation that I, I found at that time in the Philippines is I was traveling to one of the communities there. Um, I turned to Ami because I'd seen uh, in the distance a, a pump similar to this one. It wasn't actually this one, but very similar. And it was rusted and it looked as though it was disused. And, and I said to Ami, uh, that pump doesn't look as though it's used. What, what's the story behind that? Do you know? And I said, oh, yeah, yes. This was given to uh, another NGO uh, several years ago. But uh, unfortunately, it stopped working. And the community had no way of being able to repair it because that NGO had gone on. They moved on to another, another place. And so that pump just left, was left there. It just wasn't working whatsoever. When I got to the community that we were visiting, um, and I saw some of these pumps, this is uh, one of them, uh, I purposefully said to uh, the community members, what will you do when this pump breaks down? And because it will, inevitably it will. I've seen it, you know, it happen just on the way here. And they said, oh, we don't need to worry about that because when we negotiated with the local authorities to get this pump installed, they assured us that they would also provide uh, repairs if anything happens to it and that it stops working. And it was at that moment that my concept of what a charitable organization um, that is working to end poverty, how they should work. My idea was that you go into a place and if they need food, you give them food. 
if they need water, you give them a pump. If they need a school, you go in and build them a school. And the donors give them the money, go straight to them. Great, that, that's fine. That was my understanding. And I soon realized after my time in the Philippines, that was just not a sustainable solution whatsoever. But the way that Outreach International was working was very, very different. Um, and that there was a sustainable solution that comes from the heart of the community. Um, I have worked with other uh, charitable organizations. I have to say that they're starting to use the same sorts of techniques that OI has been using for so many years. Um, they're, they're not probably as effective because they haven't been doing it for so long. Uh, but what I know is that that process works um, and it's something that OI should be hugely proud of. Um, and, and that transformed my way of thinking of this is how a charitable organization really should be working. So, so my time in the Philippines was transformative and I planned to go back into business a year after. Um, I didn't. 15, 16 years on and I'm still not back in the corporate world. And so I decided from that moment onwards that this is what I want to do. I want to be able to take photographs of the work um, that charitable organizations are doing and of these people that when I meet them, uh, they share something of me, something of them to me. Um, and I want to share that to, to other people. And I, I hope that I, I do that through my images. So that's Philippines. We're going to move on now to the other side of the world very, very quickly. It won't take very long um, to Bolivia. And this is actually the experiences and the stories I want to share from this is Again, it was another very early trip that I had on behalf of Outreach International. I think it was 2010. Again, it was another donor site visit. So there may be some of you out there that remember this, this trip as, as well. Um, but the reason I want to share these stories is a, a different type of transformation. This is about a transformation that takes place within the mindset of individuals and the mindset of communities. As I've traveled around the world and seen to well, many places of poverty, um, I noticed that it's very easy for these communities to sink into a, I call it a pit of despair. And it's, it's as though their life is so hard, so difficult that they get to a point where they accept that. That is the norm. Um, what is the point in trying to make our lives any better? Because everything is stacked against us. If we've tried anything in the past, it just doesn't work. So do you know what? We'll just accept this is our lot in life. Um, and they just continue accepting their life as it is. When I went to Bolivia, I realized that Outreach International had a way of transforming that mindset of uh, reversing it and making people realize actually, you can change, you can come out of that pit of despair. So I want to uh, tell you a couple of stories that, that took place there in, in Bolivia. And this particular location is called Hatton Pampa. It's absolutely a stunning place. It's beautiful. Um, but Hatton Pampa is very remote. It's very difficult to get there by vehicle. And at the time that we got there, I think actually, well, I know uh, we ended up walking the last uh, several hundred yards to, to get to it had, because it was so difficult to get there in a vehicle. Um, here's a, a photo of just one of the homesteads. They're quite spread out. You can just see in the top left side of, the, of this photo, there is another home way off in the distance there. It just kind of shows you how spread out that these people are. And it's a hard, hard way of life. But as I was walking up along to Hatton Pampa back in 2010, I uh, was talking to Florencia, who is the country, country coordinator there. And she said, do you know, we, we very nearly did not end up working here. And I said, oh, why is that? So, well, we were, we were working in a, in a, a neighboring community, Peridones, and um, we had some members from Hatton Pampa come and meet us 
and said, look, we've seen what you're doing in Paradonis, and we feel that we need that as well. You've made all sorts of changes for the better in that place. Please come and help us as well. Uh, Florencia said, look, I, I am so, so sorry, but we just do not have the resource to be able to help you right now. Maybe in the future we can look at this, but right now, unfortunately, we can't help. So the community of Hampa, they went away. Several days later, Florencia told me that they were in their vehicle coming back from Paradonis and they said, and suddenly we ended up seeing, again, this group of people, but they were thrown out within the middle of the road. They also got hold of stones and rocks and they piled them all into the road. Basically, Florencia said, we just could not get by them. So her and the team got out of the vehicle and went to speak to these people. And they said, please, we beg you, come, just have a look at our community, see how we live, see some of the difficulties, but we're a, a people that will work, will work hard, will do pretty much whatever we need to, to pull ourselves out of this situation, but we just need some help, help us to do that. Come and see our community. If after that, you still feel that you can't help us, we will leave you and say, okay. Well, uh, Florencia and the team uh, were so moved. They said, look, we don't have all the resource that we really need, but we will do whatever we can. And so they started that process of helping the people of Hatton Pampa. And so when I heard that story, it just made me realize that that whole concept of, you know, I, we can't do anything to change our lot in life. That's just how it is. But just by seeing that spark that they saw from a neighboring community and seeing how Outreach International had worked with them and the changes they had made, just that spark was enough to change and transform the community members of Hatton Pampa's way of thinking, that mindset to a point where they said, we can make a difference in our lives. And the next story, just gives a little bit of an example of what they achieved. So we, we got to the, the community and they started to tell us about some of their difficulties. And the, the first thing that they said, we, we had issues with accessing water. And, and this is the place, this is the a stream where they had to go to get their water. Um, it's located about one and a half miles away from Hatton Pampa. It is not an easy walk. And I can tell you that because I did it myself. I walked from the community to this place. And to be honest, there were parts of that journey that were quite treacherous. Um, there are all sorts of places where there is rocks around. Navigating through that was not easy. So I got to this place, I was shattered. And then I thought, hang on a minute. These people have then got to walk back. Often this is women with a bucket of water and they've got to take that back every single day they walk one and a half miles to get this water. And again, I'm going to be honest with you, it didn't look that clean. They drink this water, they wash in it, they cook with it. And so uh, they told me that this was an issue. I felt for them. But I said, well, OK, how did you how did you try to overcome this? And they said, well, we thought maybe you know, if we could have some kind of clean water direct into our community, that would be so helpful. Um, a wife could have quite easily have said, okay, well, we'll provide you with a, a pump with whatever it is that you needed. But they actually said, no, try contacting your local authorities and see what they can provide. And they said, but we've got no experience of doing that. We can't talk to these people. And so the staff in Bolivia said, well, we'll give you that training. Um, we will teach you on how to conduct yourself and the right questions to ask at that meeting. So a few months later, they went and had that meeting. And they said, well, there's some good news and bad news. You know, I'd love to say, oh yes, they, they attended that meeting and it was all great. They all said, no problem whatsoever. We'll give you the water, off we go. No, not as straightforward, that's, that's life. Um, but they said, yeah, there's some good news and bad news. The good news is that we can provide you with all the pipe work that is needed to get you fresh water direct into your community. The bad news is the source that we need to tap into is two and a half miles away. 
And the other bad news is that we don't have any labour available to be able to uh, fit and to lay those pipes. People of Pampa have very resilient and they weren't deterred by that. And they just said, OK, that's absolutely great. We will lay those pipes. Just provide us with the materials that we need and we will lay them. For months, I believe it took six months, men, women and children of Hatton Pampa used their hand tools and they chiseled away at rock times, moved everything out of the way so that those water pipes could be laid. It was an incredible feat, really was. And they told us we now have access in our community to clean running water. They were so proud of what they had achieved. And the thing is, is that, yes, OK, it's something quite simple, having water. But what I took away from that was that they received a confidence from that whole process. Their thinking was then, OK, well, we've got water. What is the next problem we're going to solve? What's the next thing that we can work on? And they had a confidence to be able to go and do that and to actually achieve this. I've been to Hatton Pampa uh, just a few years ago, and I can tell you they've achieved so much. They built, again, they built it themselves, a road. Um, they had a school that's available much closer to them. They have vegetable gardens. They've done so much. And all because of that transforming moment when they saw a neighboring community that was working with Outreach International and they said, we can do this too. So we're now going to move to another country again, back <laughs> uh, over to the other side of the world again, but this time to India. So the first two places that I've talked about with Philippines and the Bolivia, they were my very, very early experiences and it was transfor transformational because of that. Uh, India, I have only just come back from within the last couple of months or so. And I have to say that this was probably one of the most uh, powerful uh, experiences that I've ever had um, in all of my humanitarian photography professional career. Um, so when we arrived at, at, and in India, we always have a meeting with all the staff to go through, these are the places we're going to be visiting. And I saw on, on the list a, a place called uh, Kurumpeta. And straight away that, um, straight away I knew that I'd been there before. And I said, oh, it'd be great to go back there, but I'm surprised that you're still working in Kurumpeta. And that was 12 years ago when I was last here. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, when you first came, that was, we were literally just groundwork and we just started the whole process um, of working with them at Kurumpeta. But we've actually phased out from there a few years ago. But we thought it would be worthwhile you actually going and still meeting these people and seeing what a community is like that no longer has that day-to-day -day support from Outreach International see what they have gone on to, to achieve. So I thought, this sounds, this sounds absolutely great. And so the, the morning we were gonna go to Kurumpeta, I'd got my ideas of what I, or what's only what I remembered from 12 years ago. Pretty much all the houses were like this that you can see. They had straw roofs, they had mud bricks just holding them up. There was the odd brick building, um, but very, very few and far between. The vast majority was this. So as we were approaching Kurumpeta, I saw something very, very different. Um, there were also buildings everywhere, houses everywhere, and I hardly saw any straw roofs. Uh, and I turned to turn around to Sam Beer, who was traveling with me, and I said, this can't be the place that I saw uh, 12 years ago. Um, this is just not what I remembered whatsoever. And he said, well, this is Kurumpeta. And then we carried on walking. And, and, I, and I saw this gentleman um, and I recognized him straight away. His name is Kostoma. And, um, and he recognized me and he, he walked straight up to me as, and he shook my hand warmly uh, and said, yes, I, I remember you coming and taking my photograph. And uh, he said, I remember you coming into my home. 
and we sat and talked together. Uh, I said, yeah, I have so, so many fond memories of, of this time, but, but things seem to have changed um, this, in this place. And I said, whereabouts are you living? And he said, he just turned around. I said, this is my house. I, I was blown away. <laughs> if, if you imagine what I'd remembered of Curran Petter, to seeing this, I actually said to, I said to Kiss Boma, I said, did you win the lottery? Did you come into a load of money? And he said, no, 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 we've worked with the local government and most people in, in our community now have a house similar to this. I was just totally blown away by what I saw. So I carried on walking and, and I saw another person that I recognized, a, a girl, about 12 years ago, her name was Sasmita. And uh, I can remember her telling me how she would walk down to the river that was local to them. And that's where she would fetch her water. And these are the photos that I, I took of Sasmita. And um, she said, it's, it's really difficult because the fields that we have to walk through to be able to get to this river, uh, there are snakes and there are scorpions in there. Um, and it's quite a dangerous. So I said, well, you know, what are you hoping for? And she said, well, really, we need to have a pump within our uh, water source within our community so that we don't have to travel anymore to the river. Well, as I saw her 12 years later, um, I said, well, can you show me? Did you manage to get the pump? Did you get that water in your uh, community? She said, well, yes, we did, but come back to my house. Um, meet my family and this was her beautiful daughter and uh, she then took me round the rear side of the house and she said yes we have water and she showed me the faucet every single one those houses in Currumpeta now have clean running water plumbed direct into their own homes you know we just take this stuff for granted. But for them, that is life changing. Because I had a, a, a story again from Susmita that she told me that when they were traveling down 12 years ago to go and get the water, she'd had a friend that had been bitten by a snake. And unfortunately, she had died. So that was life changing. And she said, well, it's, it just doesn't stop there. She said, because we also have something else I want to show you. And again, we went a little bit further around the back of, of the house. <laughs> this photo is lovely. This little girl just popped her head out. So I had to take that photo. But to be honest, that's not actually what I'm showing you this image for. I'm showing you this image because of those pipes that you see coming down. They're toilets, they're latrines. Every single property within that community now has their own toilet. It's simple. It's something we just take for granted. But what that means is that the women don't have to go out to the fields because that's where they used to have to go to where it was a toilet to, kind of, to protect their decency and to be away from the men. And they would go out there in an evening and at night time. And that's when the scorpions and the snakes come out. They don't need to do that anymore. They have their own toilets. And, you know, I, I have to admit, I, I get quite emotional because this was such a powerful experience for me. I, I'm in a very privileged position. You, know, you guys in Kansas City um, and even the staff in the country, they see these incremental changes and I'm, and I'm sure they're celebrated. But for me to be able to go in several years after that change is monumental. It really is. Um, so for me, this time in Currumpeta, it was emotional for me. I, I was walking around that community with a beam on my face. And you know, sometimes when you walk, you can, you can go to a place and you just kind of feel something about that place. You just get a feeling. As I was walking around Currumpeta, there was just this feeling of optimism and joy um, of hope. It was almost tangible. It really was. Um, 
So yeah, it was an amazing, amazing time. And I'm so grateful to Average International for having that opportunity for myself to experience that. So thank you. I want to share just almost one last photo. This photo here um, is not from Kurun Petta, it's just from one of the other communities in, in India, but I take a lot of these photos. And these are where the HDS the facilitators spend time meeting and talking with the communities, organizing the communities so that they can transform, so that they can work towards making huge differences, the sorts of difference that I have witnessed. To be honest, as a, as a photographer, these types of photos are not easy to get. There's just so many variables, lots of people involved. Um, so to be able to get a powerful image is, is not easy. Um, but I take a lot of them because this is probably the most important photo, type of photo that I take. It shows the work of Outreach International and its uniqueness. And, and I just know from my experience of being to all these places, that that process works. So if nothing else you take from this time that you know, I shared with you, um, please, if you ever see a photo like this, remember, this is what Outreach Internationalism is about. And finally, um, I, I asked you if this was okay. So this is from me personally to you as supporters of Outreach International. I am in a, a very unique and privileged position to be able to see all this work firsthand. I really wish that you as donors and supporters, I wish you could see it for yourself. And some of you have, um, but many of you won't have done. And I, I want to assure you that your support is making an incredible difference. It's not hyperbole for me to say it's life changing because I have seen it. You are changing lives because of your support. And I just say thank you. And that, that's from me personally. This is not from Outreach International, this is from me because I've seen it firsthand. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for, for listening to me. Um, I really do, again, appreciate taking the time out of your day to listen to the sort of these things that I have to, have to share with you. So thank you. And I'm going to hand back over to Charlotte. Oh, Wayne, I'm feeling emotional too. I can't, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Uh, when I asked you to do this event with us, I was so hoping that you would say yes, because I knew it would just be this wonderful. And I'm so grateful that you have spent your time with us this morning, sharing these stories and these powerful photos. And I know I speak for everybody on the call today when I'm expressing my gratitude to you for sharing these reflections in such a beautiful and profound way, truly. Thank you so much, Wayne. It's a pleasure to get to work with you. And before we officially conclude, I want to add on to Wayne's sentiments and continue to express my sincere gratitude to all of you, the donors that are here with us this morning. This work these stories, this transformational change is all possible because of you. This is what your support has done. Now just imagine what we can continue to do together. Thank you for being part of this chapter of Outreach International, but more importantly, thank you for being part of the next chapter, being part of what's to come and where we will continue to go together. Our world is a better place because you are in it. And I'm just so grateful to get to be part of this community with you. Thank you everybody so much for being here today. Please enjoy the rest of your day.